Hey, it's Luke. I make music for television and I have so many people asking me how to do it, how it's done, how it all works. Uh, so here goes. The first thing you have to do is you find a music library. Uh, there are there are oh, quite a few of them around. Some are better than others. You have to do a little bit of research. Uh, you can search online and see which names come up regularly and they keep coming back. Another way to do it is to check your favorite TV shows, shows that have music uh, in the style that you enjoy making, and uh, check the credits and see. Uh, very, very, very often you'll have a list of five or six different music libraries and, uh, and uh, companies. You can look for music supervisors as well, try to contact them directly. Uh, but the easiest way is you find a music library uh, to be able to send your music to. Once you've found the right one, you did your research, you're, you're comfortable with you know, who you're going to send the music to, your job isn't done yet. Before you apply, basically before they'll accept you, you have to send them some of your music and then they'll have, they'll have a listen and see if it, it fits with their library. Uh, but before you even get to that step, you have to be registered with what's called a PRO, Performing Rights Organization. Each country has their, their own, so it depends on where you are and it depends, uh, there are different, different ways to, to, to choose them. If you're in the States, it'll likely be ASCAP or BMI. If you're in Canada, it's SOCAN, PRS in the UK. Uh, you find the one for your country and uh, you apply. It doesn't cost anything, but you have to sign up for the one that applies to you. Your next step is to make sure that your music is broadcast ready. By broadcast ready, it means it's been mastered. Even if you master it yourself, just that those levels are right, it, it's mixed right, it, it sounds good. Um, you want to be able to export it as stems as well. A lot of music libraries will ask you for the, uh, the drum and bass track, the, the instrumental separate from the vocals. Uh, you know, you'll send them a bunch of different stems because music editors like to chop it up to make sure that it ends a certain way. Another thing to remember is to try to make your extra a hard ending. So you don't want it to be fading out at the end. You want it to end up with a boom. You know, that's what uh, the music supervisors prefer and uh, the, <laughs> the music editors, you'll make everybody happy that way. And before I keep going, I have to warn you, you're not gonna get results right away. This takes a while and you have to be patient because once the music is with your music library, uh, then it has to make it through the show and then it, I'll do a whole other video on why it takes so long, but it'll be a while before you see a penny out of you know everything you've sent. But you're working on the process and you're working on getting some music out there regularly so that eventually you're in this, this way where there's consistent money coming in uh, as like every three months you're getting an extra, an extra bit of money from the music that you did plus the new music that you're sending in. So it's like the amount hopefully will grow exponentially over time. So once you're registered with the PRO, you want to register your tracks with them so everything's in the system. Uh, your music library will likely be doing the same thing, but they will put a modified version of the title. So if, you're, if your song is called uh, Cheeseburgers Are Delicious, then uh, they will call it Cheeseburgers Are Delicious dash and a few letters or something that represents the, the name of their company or, or something like that. So what happens is when a song plays on TV, they know if it's the music library that got the placement or if it was you yourself um, and they're able to figure out the rights because the music library will obviously take part of the, uh, they'll take a percentage out of it. So the rights that you have with the music library will be different than if you were sending it yourself and licensing it out yourself. So then, once that's all done, the fun begins because the music is with the library, they're sending it, you know, music supervisors, uh, producers, music editors, everybody's looking through that database trying to find music that fits for their scene. So they're able to choose your song, drop it into their show, and, uh, and go from there. So what happens once the music has been put into a show is the producers will send what's called a cue sheet to the PRO. And it used to be these sheets, I actually have <laughs> an old, this, it used to be done this way on paper. So they'd, they'd fill out the name of the track, the, the author, the share, whatever, the producer, the, name, the information about the show here. They would send that into the PRO and then the PRO would process everything. Huh put it down here so it doesn't make any more noise but and then um, the PRO would have the information to do it now it's all done electronically with spreadsheets and and whatever in most cases but uh, they will send 
every usage of your track and everybody else's tracks over to the PRO. So what happens, even if it's one second, it'll be in there. So uh, there are some shows at the beginning, I, I remember talking to somebody who was doing music for television and I was saying, oh, I, I was watching uh, MTV Cribs and they use little bits and pieces of songs. I said, maybe it's like, I'm wondering, is it because of licensing? So it costs them, uh, like they don't have to deal with the license. And he was like, no, every single second goes in there, every single second. So it, it turns out they just like fast edits and they like things to be, be moving around a lot which is great for you because some of these shows are playing so many tracks I sat there one one day and on one of the shows that that my music is on and I was listening and it's like hundreds of tracks within within that 40 minute show like it's uh, there there's a lot of music being used and there's a lot there are a lot of opportunities if you're making the right type of music and the right type of music can just listen to listen to TV see what what's being played Try to find songs that you're like, that style is just, it could be better. Just watch TV shows and see what kind of music is on there in the background. And you don't even notice it. Unless you're listening for it, you don't realize how many songs there are on just about any TV show that you're watching. So after your PRO gets these cue sheets from that thousands or millions of productions around the world, <laughs> they'll sit there and figure out the share of, it's basically, the money that the PRO collects from broadcasters and other places, they it's put into a pie that's split up in little tiny, tiny, tiny slices that gets spread out between all of the rights holders. So if your song, let's say you've got a minute uh, that plays in the background of uh, a big TV show on one of the networks, then your pay will be a lot bigger than if it's on a tiny network and it's only playing for three or three or four seconds. Or if, if it's a theme, that's where the, the real trick is. I'll talk about that in a moment. But um, if you can get a theme song for a show, then that's great because it's played over and over and over. So they'll sit there and figure out, okay, this track, the publishing is 100% you know, to this, 50% of the writer's credit is to this person, you wrote it with somebody else, and so there, that gets split up. How many seconds the song has been on the show, uh, how it's used on the show. If somebody's dancing to the music, the amount that you're getting paid because they're doing something on screen with your music is generally higher than if it's just background music. If it's a theme, it'll be paid higher than as well, you know, background music or, or whatever. And it depends on how big the network is. A larger network will be paid more for each second than uh, the channel, one of those channels that you see on channel uh, 289 or 943 or something. <laughs> Though they still do pay. So it doesn't matter where it is, everything adds up. I actually had one track. I got a penny once from, there was a network, there's Co Cosmopolitan Magazine, which is a well known uh, magazine. They had a TV network in Canada for a short while. I didn't even know what this Cosmo was and uh, I got paid one penny for you know for a song that ended up on there and uh, you know a penny was a penny because that gets added up to the pennies from the other ones or the you know whatever so it's always nice to see see it on it see your track listed on, an, on a different place that you didn't expect. And the ideal dream placement is to get a TV theme on a show that goes syndicated because then it's money for years. Uh, and when you think about it, the theme plays at the beginning and at the end, but you don't really notice it. But a lot of the time the theme is playing right before the ad, right after the ad. Sometimes when there's something going on, there's like a different version of it or, or whatever. So that can be very nice for uh, money for years down the road. And like I was saying, in a lot of cases, themes do pay more than background music for each second that's on the air. So it can pay very well. I'm still working on that theme. <laughs> okay, so now you're wondering, some show chose your music. How do you find out that they're paying you, how much they're paying you, whatever. So each PRO works differently, but generally most of them they will send you money every quarter. So every three months you'll get either a check or a deposit into your bank account for the money that you've earned. I know what you're thinking, but Luke, what happens if my music plays in another country? Do I have to join all these PROs in every country? No, you don't. They have reciprocal agreements with 
all of these different countries. So basically when your music is played in those other countries, they're sending the money to uh, your PRO and your PRO eventually sends it to you. It can take a while. For some countries, they're still processing money from, I think it was like 10 years ago <laughs> that I saw a few of them. It, it takes a lot longer for international royalties, but eventually makes its way to you. And I know you're probably wondering if you get paid up front and on the back end, and it depends on the music library, it depends on each deal. Uh, in many, many, many cases, you're just getting the back end royalties. So from your PRO, uh, you're not getting anything up front unless it's an ad a lot of the time if it's advertising because there are no royalties or there are less royalties on the back end, you'll get it on the front end. But most of the time you're getting the money uh, from the royalties and that's, that's the money that, that you're making. The nice thing though is once you've got that track in there in, in, with the PRO, they're selling it to m multiple TV shows, multiple productions, they could sell to films, whatever ads, and you don't have any more work every time. They're not coming to you every time and saying, oh, look, we have a deal, we gotta figure out. You, it's basically, they're placing it and then you're getting the money. You don't have to deal with anything after you've sent that, that music over, which is really nice, because it's that, that residual. So every three months, if you've earned something, you'll have a check come in or a direct deposit come in to your, to your bank account from your PRO. But you have to be ready and know this. The amounts can fluctuate a lot. Like it can be thousands one month, it could be $1.50 the next quarter. Uh, it can be all over the place. Even some of the huge artists have those those fluctuations and have have mentioned you know how how tough it is because it's not necessarily that you it, it's not necessarily this this exact trend of you're like okay it's, I'm making this much this month okay uh, you know uh, and then the next year it's a little bit more and the next year it's a little bit more it can be if you're consistently sending music and uh, the library is 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 sending your music out you might have your music with a few different libraries depending on your agreement for exclusivity or whatever but basically uh, just be ready it can be a little bit of a roller coaster ride but uh, it's you know even if it's a small amount don't get discouraged it just think about what it means that your music has been on a TV show that some people watched and enjoyed and probably enjoyed a lot better because of that track that was on that show and there's always something special about distribution day it always feels like it's your birthday or Christmas it's, it's just nice to see that amount come in and then you see the report that you're able to see like which TV shows your music aired on and it's it's just a nice little surprise a lot of the time you don't even know in advance that's when you see it is once it's aired and and you get that that report so it's always nice to see your, your royalty statements and see where you are and and which shows decided to use your music the nice thing is too is there are those fluctuations but it's relatively recession proof like TV networks will lose a little bit in a recession but then in another way people aren't going to the movie theater as much they're not doing other things they're not going to the restaurant as much so they tend to watch more television and uh, from what I've noticed is when there's a when there's a recession um, the the amounts don't fluctuate that much because of that they will up to a certain point and of course we never know what happens in the future but generally uh, they don't very very they don't vary too much it's not like it crashes for a year and then it, it ha takes some time to build up again uh, the other thing that's nice too is they're moving progressively now with some new uh, revenue sources which are Netflix and the streaming services they're paying into the PRO pool and uh, you're getting money when your show airs on on Netflix or on whatever which is really nice when your track ends up on a Netflix show because you can go onto Netflix right away and watch it and, and hear exactly where they where they used it. So that's a nice little perk when it's on Netflix instead of on a TV channel where you may not have access to that show either anymore or uh, you just don't don't have access to it. And like there's so many so many of my tracks have been on shows that I've never ever seen. Uh, I'm just happy that you know I made it to the royalty statements, but uh, I'd love to be able to see it on the show. And when you do see it on a show, especially on a large show, it's like it gives you shivers. It's like a great, great, great feeling. So that's how you make money from your tracks. There's a whole lot more to it and I wanna do some videos about some of the details on each specific part of it. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to do some videos on specific parts of the licensing process. There's so much information, so many, so many things to share and I'll do some specific videos to help you guys out. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.